How's it going everyone? Right in the eye here. Back to you guys with another video. Uh, this video has been requested for a couple weeks now. Uh, this video is going to be talking about the comparisons between the 4th generation, which is the last gen, um, Devil's Canyon processors compared to the 5th generation, the new processors that just barely released the Broadwell processors. And I'm comparing the i5s and the i7s to one another. And... Let's get into this here. Okay, so we'll start with the i5s over here. The i5s, the biggest difference between the 4690K and the 5675C as far as things that you can that you would want for gaming is you're going to have less megabytes of cache here. You're going to have 6 megabytes on the 4690K compared to 4. Um, it is a little, it has a little bit bigger bus. That's uh, It's not really going to affect it too much. The, the nanometer process is a little smaller on the new processor, they're trying to make them a lot smaller. That's not really going to affect you, except for maybe heat dissipation. I have heard that the uh, new Broadwell processors, because they have a smaller lithography, uh, that the um, heat spreader is not necessarily that well at um, dissipating the heat as easily. So you might want to get a really good cooler if you plan to overclock that. They both have four cores on the i5 side. Um, here's one of your biggest differences as far as speed goes, right there. 3.5 to, to uh, 3.1. So the last generation Devil's Canyon are faster on both. The wattage is a little different. So you have 88 to 65. So the, this target for the new Broadwell processor, if those of you who are trying to build a new small form factor PC and you can't put a huge power supply in there, this will save you some of the wattage, which is good. It's actually a good thing. So and this the new the last generation processors do allow you to run your RAM at 1.5 volts. Now the biggest difference, and let me stress, I can't stress this enough. The only reason I would recommend for someone to buy the new Broadwell processors, that being the i5 5675C or the i7 5775C, is if you are not going to have a dedicated graphics card in your rig. And or if it's a very small form factor and you can't even fit one in there anyway. But if you're going to have a dedicated graphics card, I would recommend the Devil's Canyon, either the i5-4690K or the i7-4790K. Can't stress that enough. And this is why. The Intel uh, HD graphics here, compared to the Iris Pro Graphics 6200, um, is phenomenal compared to the differences between the two. The Broadwell uh, Iris Pro Graphics, this one here, is ridiculous. These this graphics um, integrated onto the CPU chip can play 1080p at medium to high settings, maybe even ultra settings and low low settings depending on what game you're playing. So if you're playing like your uh, Dota's and stuff like that, ultra settings. I'm guessing you could get 1080p, 60 FPS all day. If you're playing like your Witcher threes, Crisis threes, and stuff like that, you're gonna probably want to put that at down on low, maybe even medium uh, to play on 1080p and get reasonable frame rates so this is the first processor that we actually have on intel side which beats amd's um api processors by a long shot you can play games at 1080p with just your integrated graphics and get 60 fps that is insane so that's the only reason i would recommend anyone to buy the new broadwell processor if you're not going to buy a dedicated graphics card and that is the biggest difference everything else is literally the same so now I'll compare the uh, i7-4790K to the i7-5775C. So 8 gigabytes of cache here on the 4790K, which is the processor that I run. I absolutely love this processor. Um, it, I have mine overclocked right now to 4.6 gigahertz. I will have it up to 4.7 gigahertz as soon as I get my new radiator. I'll cover that in a different video. Uh, I, I've been running Crisis 3 and capturing at the same time, and the uh, Corsair H100i GTX was allowed my core number one to hit 100 degrees, which is TG Max. So that was not 2J, 2J Max, sorry, uh, which is not acceptable at all. So I'm going to be upgrading to the only, the one and only best solution that I found. That is a 360 millimeter radiator closed loop, which is insane. So I'll get to that in a later different video. I'll have an unboxing in a couple days from now, later this week. And also, like, it being, uh, when I installed my case, I'll have a video about my whole new upgraded rig later on. So that's just a little teaser. But anyway, let's get back to what we're talking about here. So that's 8 megabytes. Headset died, or turned off on me. But, so, the um, 8 megabytes compared to the 6 megabytes is the biggest difference here. So with this one here, you're going with an i5. So you have an i7, you buy, so you have the cachet of an i5 from last generation. That's kind of 
it's not good. Okay, so let's move down. Same with the graph. And here's here's another thing. You're they're charging you a lot. You're charging you anywhere from thirty to forty dollars more for the new Broadwell processors compared to the Devil's Canyon processors. For nothing of a game besides, like I said, the new graphics. That's it. The integrated graphics is the only thing that you're gaining. And that's probably why it costs so much. Which is also probably the reason why they had to lower the cache and lower the frequency here. So 3.3 compared to 4.0. 3.7 compared to 4.4 on the turbo. And like I said, I have mine overclocked to 4.6 right now. 4.7 you can get that use most of the time with a, like a 240 millimeter radiator. You can get 4.7 stable easy all day. You can even easy tune it with the Gigabyte motherboard or uh, the, e the easy tuning software on uh, Asus motherboards. Easy. So that's the only reason why I would recommend getting a De uh, Broadwell processor over the Devil's Canyon is if you are not going to use a dedicated graphics card. Plain and simple. Alright guys, this has been right in the eye here. Uh, back to you guys with this video comparing the Broadwell and the Devil's Canyon processors. If you like this video, please leave a like on that. Please subscribe. And if you disliked it, please leave a comment down below. Um, if you have any other suggestions of what you would like me to do differently, this has been Right in the Eye, and we will catch you guys in the next video. Thank you very much.